Hi, and welcome to part three of this three-part mini-series. If you have not seen part two yet, a link for that appears above. Please click on that and go and watch that first. In this video, we'll combine the work of the last two videos, whereby we'll take the angles that we've calculated for the double pendulum and feed those into the simulator to get our final result. Okay, so if we go back to the previous little bit of code, we found that this was effectively a time-stepping solution, which just initialized an array, had some times, and then all it did is it advanced each time by doing this step here, this RK step. So in fact, that's all we need is the RK step. What I can do is take these two routines from up here. I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to paste them straight into my other code right here at the top. So this can do the RK step for me. And then all I need to do is I need to be able to take this RK step. Um, where is it further down this code? This step here. I need to be able to do this. All right, so let me... I've got an infinite while loop, so it works a little bit differently. But instead of here where I'm calculating the A1s, the, the angles, I need to calculate this here. And in order to accommodate that, I need to set up time equals zero. Let's say that uh, delta time is equal to 0 0.01 for now. And I need an initial y. y equals an np array. Um, these are the initial velocities and the initial displacements. And let's just assume that one of the initial displacements is, I don't know, 0 0.5 radians. Wow, true. So what happens at the end of this loop is the time must update. So time equals time plus delta time. And... That should happen over here because the time must increment and then it must step. Yeah, because we had the initial conditions up top. Let's take that out. We've got delta t, we've got time. That should be it, except for the fact that a1 and a2 here are not a1 and a2. Those are actually y2 and y3. Right, the third and the fourth element of that vector, of the state vector. So we're feeding in the angles there. The angle initially was 0 0.5 on the second one. And that should be it. Let's try to run it. Delta T, oh, some indenting issues. Let's re indent this. Try it again. NP, oh, I need to import NumPy at the top. Uh, import NumPy as NP. I wonder if there's anything else I need to import. Uh, uh, no, I think we've got all of those. Oh, probably this one here, the inverse. Yep. All right, let's run that. G is not defined. I thought I'd define G. G is gravity. It's easy enough to define. G is 9.81 meters per second squared in SI units. Oh, oh, that looks good. Oh, my goodness. That looks really good. All right, let's give it a different initial condition so that I'm convinced. Let's uh, crank up this mass. Um, let's make the second mass a little bit bigger than the first. Let's bring the first one down there. Um, let's crank up that position to two. Let's set it into motion now. None of this gentle nonsense. Looks good. It just looks a little bit... Let me see if I can up... The 
you know what, let me up the delta time. That's the way to do it. Let me take slightly bigger time steps so that it, it, it runs a little bit quicker. There we go. Oh, that looks good. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Scale update. Oh, I never put scale in here. Fix that. But I thought it would be useful to maybe be able to trace the path of the second pendulum, Bob. And just to show a trail on that second pendulum, Bob. And I noticed that was supposed to be blue and it's actually green. Go back to my definition of blue. This should be zero and this should be 255. And why don't we do a light blue while I'm at it too. We'll, I want to do a trail. I want that pendulum bob to, to leave a trail behind it so that we can actually see the whole locus of that trail. And let's create a light blue. Let's just bring up the color in the other two channels here a bit. All right. And what we need to do is create a second surface that we're going to draw this onto. And uh, then we'll, it's called blitting them together. So I think what I want to do is over here, when I first create my initial surface, I want to create another surface we'll call the trace surface. And we'll just copy the screen. So we'll make a copy. And separately, we're going to plot the trace of the second bob on that. And where do we want to do it? We obviously want to do it as part of render. Um, we need to store a previous point is what we're going to need to do. So let's just say previous point equals none, but we'll create a global variable there. And by the way, guys, I know you're going to be commenting about my habits and using global variables. This is not a course in Python programming per se. I would do it differently if this, there were style points involved. Um, point is just to get it to work and demonstrate how it can be done. You guys are welcome to take it and run with it as you see fit. So what I'm going to do is have the previous points and then I need to update every time I draw. Hmm. I'm going to do it here in the render screen. And I'm going to say that even before I do any of that, if there's a previous point, because I don't want to do it initially before there's a previous point. So, so if there's a previous point, I would like x previous and y previous to equal previous point 0 and previous point 1. And then we'll do it as a line, I think. So we'll say pygame.drawLine, whoops, line on the trace surface now. And we'll make it light blue, so it looks like a trace. And we want it to go from the previous point, xp, yp, to the current point, number 2, x2, y2. Um, and let's make it a weight of 3. Then after I filled the screen with white, I now want to merge the trace layer with the original screen. And I do that, um, I'll blit it. So I'll go screen, blit, uh, trace, and then the offset, zero. I don't want it offset at all. And that's it. So the only other thing I need to do is I need to then update the point. So to update the point, I'm just going to return it as part of the render, x2, y2. 
and I'm going to catch it here as the previous point. Okay, so I call the render routine, it puts in the point, it renders it, and then whatever the current point asks to is gets stored as the previous point for next time. I think that seems fine. Let's try to run it. Oh, that looks good. Fantastic. All right, so I do believe we're pretty much done. I think just one last thing, just since we want to go all out, is uh, we can write to the screen, we can put the time up on the screen. And the best way to do that is well, we need to call up the fonts. So we'll just put it here before our loop. Uh, Pi game, whoops. Uh, we need to initialize the fonts first. So that's just font in it. And then let's just define a font. My font equals pygame dot font dot sys font. Why don't we use comic sans and size, I don't know, pick a size, 38. All right, and then I'm just going to find a point down here. Where let's just neaten this up a little bit, the code. Um, I'm going to write it in here, I think, before we update the time. Um, let's just create a string. I'll call it time string. Uh, we use an F string for this. And let's just say time t in seconds. Whoops. In fact, we don't want t. We want to round t to say one decimal place. All right, and then we want to create text, which we'll use my font uh, render. And what do we want to render? We want to render the time string. False zero 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 this is the color. It's black. And then we just want to put on the screen. So we want screen. We'll do a blit again text mm, will offset 10 10 just so it's not right in the top corner it will be down a little bit and i think that should be about it for this project let's see if i've got this to work no what's going on maybe it's not a more recent version of python so let's not use an f string here let's just say x and dot form do it that way. Does it like me now? Oh, type here. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, there we go. That looks just perfect. I think we're going to leave it right there, everyone. So with that, I hope you found something useful in this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below. Please go ahead and give it a like if you did like it so that others can get to watch this video too. Or better still, subscribe to the channel and be notified when any new videos come out. Make sure you smash the bell buttons below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.